Hello and welcome back to Youth Squad Prospects 3 with Colchester United. And today it's going to be a special episode. It's going to be the season review. If you saw last episode, we won the league title. And in between episodes, I've seen the head until the end of the season where we switched to the new season. And in the meantime, we sold uh, Eusebio Ojeda for half a million pounds. There it is. There's the league table. We lost to, in the FA Cup to Arsenal right there on the round of 16, who went on to win the whole thing. They beat Middlesbrough in the final 1-0. So I'm really happy that Arsenal went ahead and won that. West Brom won the Carabao Cup. I believe that, no, yeah. Wigan Athletic won the Checker Trade Trophy. Wickham Wanderers were uh, promoted as well, apart from Coventry and Chesterfield, and us, of course, as the champions. Copy, uh, Super Cup, Roma won the Super Cup. Champions League, Barcelona won 3-2 in the final against Bayern Munich. Then EuroLeague, what about EuroLeague? Inter won the EuroLeague. They beat Bayer 0-4, Leverkusen in the final 2-1. And yeah, there is the league table at the end of the season. Seven points separate us from Coventry. Wickham won promotion in sixth. And Chesterfield just there on the podium. Let's have a look at other leagues. Boca Juniors won in Argentina. Belgium, Anderlecht won. Brazil, Gremio won. Very strange. Denmark, Copenhagen still dominating. England, Chelsea won the Premier League. Aston Villa, Wolves and Sheffield Wednesday were relegated. Huddersfield just escaped the drop. Manchester United failed to qualify for Champions League football. And so did Arsenal. Leicester finished in a respectable 10th place. And Spurs just missed out on the league title as well as City. Liverpool clinching that for top four spot. Championship, Brighton won the whole thing. Watford promoted as well. In second, Charlton Athletic, Preston, Blackburn and Rotherham United wait us in the League One next season. They were all relegated. League 1, Bolton won, so they are promoted. We won't be facing Mansfield, Bristol Rovers, Oldham or Exeter, unfortunately. We won't be facing my first YSP team right there. And what about next? Well, we're in England, right? I think so. Yeah, just after ours. France, Monaco retained their title. Olympic Lyon and Marseille finished above Paris Saint-Germain awkwardly. Even though they have Neymar, Di Maria, Cavani, Verratti. I don't know what is going on in Paris. I don't know what is going on in Paris Saint-Germain, but it's not good. Nice almost uh, caught up to Paris Saint-Germain as well. Very strange. Um, Germany, Dortmund beat, Lev uh, beat Bayern and Leverkusen to the title by 12 points. Wow, Dortmund dominated in the league. Wolfsburg finished fourth. Leipzig fifth. That's amazing. I don't even know how. Hamburg and Ingolstadt were relegated. I don't know if Stuttgart were. It's either between them and Darmstadt. Italy 
Roma beat Juventus to the title. Finally, Juventus dropped out. They lost the title to a single point. Milan finished tied with Juventus on points, but in third. Napoli just two points off the leaders in fourth. And then big gap there to win to Milan, Fiorentina and Torino. Salerno, Cremona and Benevento all relegated. Shame. But they were there are good teams in in Calcio B, I believe. PSV beat Ajax, Ajax to the title. They have the best team in the Netherlands right now, I think. PSV in the save. Real life though it's Ajax. I think they have moved the licht on. Maybe that's what happened in the save. I don't know. Lech Poznan still winning in Poland. Portugal Sporting beat Benfica to the title by the single point. Porto still missing out on that title. Four points below. Bitter rival Sporting and three points below. Bitter rivals Benfica. Braga finished fourth. Massive difference to fifth place Guimarães. Villa de Salves surprisingly finishing sixth. They are the one of the worst teams in the division. Congrats to them. Russia Zenit won. Uh, unsurprisingly, there's Spartak Moscow, Krasnodar, and CSK Moscow below them. Scotland Celtic beat Rangers to the title by six points. Real Madrid won the La Liga. Barcelona finished second, eight points below their bitter enemies. Atletico Madrid third. Valencia beat Sevilla to that Champions League spot. And then Rayo Vallecano, Sporting, whatever, I think it's Sporting Gijon. And Osasuna all relegated. Leganes surviving by the skin of their teeth. Levante, Granada and Las Palmas should go up. Go up. Switzerland, Basel won. Best team in uh, Switzerland by a mile. Fenerbahce and Benzik, especially Benzik, has missed out on the title. Probably because star players like Quaresma have moved on and Pepe is retiring, so he's dropped down massively in overall by now. Galatasaray also underperforming massively. I don't know the team who won in Turkey. Got a strange ass name that I can't even pronounce. They won the title. Congrats to them. They must be doing well in the save. LA Galaxy won the are winning the MLS. They still haven't won it, but they are doing really well. And that is it. That is the season. Let's just have a quick look at the squad before we go. But a more detailed look than the squad report only. Nunez was a great goalkeeper this season. Just look at his stats. Got has potential to be special. He had a clean sheet every other game, basically 42 appearances. 20 clean sheets went up 7 in overall without me even touching the guy and his reactions are growing naturally as you can see there best stat kicking at 84 got 2 years in his contract I will be renewing some delegating some Segura is a new kid I've promoted him from the youth academy he is 52 overall, as you can see there. Six foot five. Grey height on him. That's why I kept him around. He had a great potential as well. He looks like a good prospect for the future. He popped up in between episodes saying he wanted to leave. 
uh, the Youth Academy be promoted, which is nice. Tripakis and Galov Napolas both showing great potential, both great keepers. Tripakis is the shorter one, but to be honest, it's the better one out of the two. He's the more consistent guy. Galanopoulos does make more mistakes. Tripak is at seven games and three clean sheets, and Galanopoulos at three games and one clean sheet. Nunez at 7.4 average rating. Uh, Tripak has had 7.3 average in the league and 7.2 in the FA Cup. His average is ruined mainly by the preseason. And Galanopoulos, 7.1 in total. Then here we go, centre backs Valverde. Great player, six foot four. Really like him as a unit at the back. You don't really get to see him uh, in the edited episodes unfortunately, but he is really good defensive-wise. Not really great going, for, going forward, but it's League 2. It's good enough. It's more, it's more than good enough. 32 appearances, 1 assist in the last episode, and 16 clean sheets. The left, the other free agent pickup, 25 appearances, 12 clean sheets, so again, a clean sheet every other game. Uh, two really good centre backs from the free agents. The Lev is uh, just a monster at six foot six. The Pond six foot one. He's not that tall, but he makes up with the quickness. He makes up for it with the quickness and the goal scoring rate. He scored two goals in 33 games, and he had a clean sheet every three games, so he had 11 clean sheets. Gonna put 12, I had to train him to be a backup. As you can see, we're really struggling for defenders. He's really quick, can jump really high, and he's got really good strength. So six foot one is more than enough height-wise. I'm happy with that. I'll renew Valverde's contract. I'll take whatever he wants. Two years? I'll take that. Two years. He's got two years in his contract now. Now, O'Carroll. Showing great potential. Great wing back. Really like him. Even though he's playing on the right, it feels like he's playing on the left. Uh, like he plays naturally there. 60 overall. Gone up by six without even touching the guy. Showing great potential. As I said, great wing back, good height on him in six foot one. Thirty-three appearances, one assist, and fourteen clean sheets. Thought he had more assists, and I thought he had at least a goal to his name, and I thought he had more clean sheets, but I still think he did well in this season. As you can see, he had seven point three average rating. The the Lev had seven point five. Uh, the Ponton had 7.4 and Valverde had 7.6, so they're the best of the lot. Really pacey wing back and he's good technically wise. Good stand tackle on him already. And he's only got one year to his contract, so I'm going to delegate that now. Actually, no, he only wants one year. Let's negotiate this. So, O'Carroll, he can be rotation. Yes. He's happy with that. I'm going to try five years. He only wants one year. That is really strange. Three years, nah. He'll only take a two year deal. He doesn't want a release clause, which is nice. And he wants 1.2 wage, he wants a signing bonus, and he wants some other bonus that I am not willing to give him. Yeah, I'm happy with that. 1.4k, I'll take that. 
two years we've got O'Carroll for two years there we go sorted medium medium work rate as well fantastic only the skill moves and the weak foot uh, are not that great but it doesn't really feel that in the game definitely feel that he has a stronger weak foot Tomas Cardenas great wing back took the spot to Terziev in the middle of the season Gave him more competition than uh, Terziev could handle. Low medium work rates, perfect. Has potential to be special. 20 games, 8 clean sheets. 20 games, 8 clean sheets. 7.3 average rating. Same with O'Carroll. Played a lot in the league. He's growing naturally in uh, the physical stats, which is nice to see because he was defensive minded and then I was worried that he wouldn't grow that much. But he is doing well. Two star weak foot, three star skill moves. All right for a defender. I'll take it. Two years on this contract. All right. So it doesn't need to be renewed. Terziev can, I, can also play either left back or right back. Cardenas can play in the center which is nice. Terziev another good pickup from the free agents. Left back and right back but he's naturally a left back that's where he always plays. He only plays right back when we really don't have anyone to play uh, right back. Six foot does the job 28 appearances, 11 clean sheets, 7.3. Maybe I was a bit harsh, but I just feel that Terziev makes a bit more mistakes than Cardenas. Cardenas is more consistent. That's what I felt. That's why I felt he should take this spot, not because of the overall or the potential, but that will happen anyway. So, yeah. Really good physical stats, really like them. Technical stats, I trained them a bit in the first season. I think it was for the objectives. But if not, uh, I'm glad I trained him still because that definitely helped this season, especially in the beginning of the season. Right, Bohan. 5'11". So he disappoints to be honest. In the beginning I was quite reluctant on starting him. But he's our best defensive midfielder. He does a great job there. Showing great potential. 62 overall. We're not by 7. I think I touched this guy slightly in the training. 4 star weak foot, 1 star skill. That's really his only con. But he does play in a more defensive role. So I don't really need to skill with him. Got good tackling stats, good pace about him. 35 games, 1 assist, 12 uh, clean sheets, 7.5 average rating. Had 8.0 average in the FA Cup, 7.4 in the league, alright. That's good, that's really good. Really good player. He's only got one, one year left in his contract. We'll take care of that now. Seems like he doesn't want more than a year. Which is odd. I'm, I'm willing to give these guys salary. Th this is what I don't get. He only wants a one year deal. I'll try three. Nah. Still keeping on the one then well, it, it will have to be two years. Thank God these guys don't want release clauses. And now we can jump and start talking money. So, because he's from the academy, we'll go 1.8, uh, 1.75. Yeah, and that should be it, to be honest. Yeah, we're good. We're good with that. More Tenson next. Bohan is, is good. More Tenson still doesn't show the potential status. 
but I'm glad to say that he's over 75. 56 overall, six, gone up by a 6. 6-2, six really tall, does like to pop in with the late goals. Two really massive goals in our campaign. 17 games, three clean sheets. He didn't start most of them. Most of the time he would just come on when we already conceded. So that's not really his fault, to be honest. One assist. It's good for a holy midfielder. Good season for him. Most of those appearances he came off the bench. 7.5 average rating. He had more in the league and in the Carabao Cup. So, yeah. Really good job by him. Good pace, good passing stats, all that a holding midfield needs in this kind of level. When I do great, I mean average. It's not really that great, but we'll get there anyway. So, that's why I say great. Ellen Green, another holding midfielder who played in most at wing back, either on the right or on the left. Mostly on the left because of his preferred foot. He's a left, left-footed player. So yeah, six foot one, really tall. So it helps on the defensive side of things. That's why I play him at wing back because he is tall and he is quick. He is really quick. He's got good stamina. That's his best stat, by the way. So that's why I played him at wing back. One assist, four clean sheets, eighteen games, averaging. 7.4 in total, 7.5 average rating in the league. Good, good stuff by him. He's also got one year on his contract, so we'll also take care of that right now. I don't really like leaving them with just one year of their contract. Length of the contract, four years. Only wants two. We'll try three then. Nice, that'll do. Disregard release clause. We'll offer him the same we offered to Bohan, I believe. He should be happy with that. He is, doesn't want any signing bonus, which is good. Anyone else to deal the contract? So let's do the contract straight away. Vergara. Yep, three years, 1.5. Good. Callahan will also renew his. Three years, perfect. He's good to go. Brandon Rose, this is a big one. He wants two years. I'll take it. I'll take it for now. Magellan. What about you? Three years, definitely take that. We have loads of wages, so I don't mind giving them good contracts. Pierce White wants three years, which is perfect. Two years for Andrade. He had that nasty injury, so I'll take it. Boys, he only wants one year. Interesting. Wants 2.1 in wage, so... We'll be sure to give him a little bit more than that. Boys, give him important. Yeah. There we go. We should, I'm gonna go for four years. He only wants one. I don't get why most of the players only want one year on their contracts. One or two, they don't want more. He only wants 1.5 wage, he does want a lot of bonuses though. I'm happy to give him the signing bonus. I'll give him 1.6 then, in wage. He wants 1.7, stingy motherfucker. We'll give it to you because we're short on strikers and we like you. Two years on his contract, that's sorted. Anyone else? S1. And I saw someone there down at the bottom, it's Oliver Lee. So I'm happy to give S1 whatever he wants, to be honest. He wants 12k on the delegation. I'll definitely give him crucial. I don't think he'll accept anything less because of his rating. 
I really want to tie him up to a big, uh, to a massive five-year contract. I'll, I'll take two, but I'll only, I know I'll only take it because we can't give him more. So we'll take off the appearance bonus. We'll give him 9.5 in wage, 9.5, and we'll give him the additional signing bonus. He doesn't want 10k. I'll take it, I'll take it, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. Finally, Oliver Lee. He only wants one year. I'll negotiate. I think I I can give him two. I don't want him to go on a free. Not that I really need this winger. But I'm happy to sign him to a two or three year contract. Yeah. We'll give him a three year contract. Don't really like just letting people away. let them leave on a free I like to sell them but I know in this game it's really tough to sell the guys so yeah I don't think I'll be touching in some of these contracts anymore like Lee's that is good I'll try and renew some crucial players uh, I'll try and renew with Saban Day. Actually, no, that's a bad idea. I think I'm going to renew with, definitely with Griffiths, because he's young and he's a big part of the team. Yeah, three years, I'll definitely take that. Alder Sardi. Good show. Only wants two years, that's worthless. Might as well renegotiate it myself important so he wants a two-year deal I'm sorry for the background guys if you can hear the motorbikes going disregard release clause perfect I'm gonna give him 2.5 K in wage should be happy with that and he is We'll negotiate with the scout future star, definitely. Only wants two years. Damn! These guys don't want long contracts at all. Uh, rotation? I guess he's happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Let's try four years. He only wants one year. Goodbye. Just, no. No, for that I'll keep it at your current contract. Maldonado. He only wants one year. Reject. More tense than actually no Bohan. Oh, recently I've been negotiated with him. So yeah, definitely more tense. Only wants one year. What is going on with these players? They only want one year in their contracts. No, Carol Cardenas, yes. Two years, I'll try three. All right, important, I'll take that. You, you're gonna be a starter, so I'm happy with that. I'll give him three years. Another motorbike? Jesus. I'm sorry, guys, I can't do anything about it. 2.5 in wage, same that I gave to Aldasadi. He should be happy with that, and he is. Nice. Valverde and the Pont, definitely. The Pont only wants two years. God damn! Stingy motherfuckers. Rotation. Only wants one year. Goodbye. He won't take three, he'll only take two. So, there's no point. We'll renew with Nunez, definitely. I'd like that. 
try and negotiate a contract. Crucial. Time for us. I like I like five years to be honest. Will it take three? No, he'll only take two, then there's no point. Well, that is it. Where were we on the reviews? I think we were at green, so we'll move on to Billy Phillips. Good uh, backup play, had to play most at centre-back. He had nine games, managed three clean sheets. And averaging 7.1, 7.6 in the league, impressive. Nice season from him. He didn't got to play a lot, but I really like him as a player. But I don't think he's going to stick out for long here. We do have better players for his position. And he only played like centre-back. because Really because of his height. He's one of the tallest holding midfielders we've got here. And we don't really have a lot of defenders in general. So he had to play another cover for centre back. Acceleration, really good pace on Billy Phillips. So for a centre back who's tall and can run, that's good. He's got good tackling stats. Doesn't get doesn't have that good passing stats, so that's why I played him at centre back. Same with Vergara, and because it says in the player bio as well, six foot, he's tall enough. Twenty-three games av uh, with uh, eleven clean sheets, he averaged seven point five average rating in both the league and in total. He averaged more in all the cup competitions and in the preseason. Impressive. He managed a clean sheet every other game, basically, as well. Really physical player, really like him. Quick and can hold his own, which is good. Good heading accuracy and defensive stats, especially the marking, which is important, both for centre-back and defensive midfield. And he's got good passing as well. He also plays at wing-back sometimes because of his physicals. Dylan Phillips, good little player, not fantastic or anything, but another cover for, for the defense. Played mostly at wing back because he's not that tall. He's only 5'10". Not really tall enough for a center back. And he doesn't have the defensive skills to play at center back, to be honest. He's more of an offensive uh, holding midfielder He's got the pace, got some good passing stats, especially the long pass. 7.1 average rating. Only one clean sheet in the nine appearances, eight in the league, one in the Emirates FA Cup. Good little player to have if we need him, but I don't think he's going to stick out for long as well. Right, shall we move on to the ton of wingers that we have? Just look at this. Yeah, Maldonado, Lino Maldonado, showing great potential, 64 overall, gone up by 7 on his own, 6-2, that's not really uh, what most wingers get, at best they get 6 foot, most of them are like 5-7, 5-9, 5-8, 5-10, with some luck they get 5-11 and with some really good luck they get 6 foot. This guy is 6'2", that's why I really like him. And he plays really well. Got a goal and two assists to his name. 7.1 average rating. And yeah, he managed one clean sheet. That doesn't really matter in this position, does it? Good pace about him. Good ball control, good dribbling. Good long pass as well on him. I didn't know that. Three star, three star. Way he's more than good enough for this level, as I'll say this about most of the wingers. And most of the wingers had to do central attacking midfielder, striker, 
or the other side of the pitch. I just felt they were better there. Fabio Perez, because it says there that he can play centre mid. I've played him a lot in camp. That's where he got most of the games. Sometimes he played on the right, depending on the situation of the game. Really exciting prospect. Couldn't ask for a better scout future star, to be honest. 5'9", as you can see, most of the wingers are that. Averaging that height, 5'9", 5'10". Exciting prospect. Did really well. He only came about midway through the season. I remember that. 10 appearances, 2 goals and an assist to his name. 7.4 average in the league. 7.3 in total. 4 star, 3 star. Got good pace. Good shooting about him. Which is nice. That's why I played him at Cam as well. He's got good long shots. Good shot power. He's got good finishing. Doesn't really... He isn't really known for his crossing. He can cross, but it's not really that good yet. So, yeah, that's why I play Cam most of the times and because he can finish. And he can hold his own. He's got 61 strength. That's not the case with most of the wingers. So, yeah. And Sabio Ojeda, 3 star, 3 star. And Savio Ojeda, 3 star, 3 star, joining Barnett when the transfer window opens. So he didn't play a lot, mainly because of that stupid injury prone trait. He did went up by 9 because I trained him in this off season period. And I trained him uh, quite a bit when I didn't have anyone to train, anyone else to train. I did put him in the training because I knew eventually I would sell him so I decided to make a big a bit of money with that okay there's going hopefully he gets a bit of game time 6.8 average played mostly in the preseason tournament so yeah it just shows Rodolfo Castaneda really same as Perez to be honest just a Mexican Perez 64 overall, one assist to his name. Really liked him as a player. Thought he'd have more goals and or assists. He did well in the league, averaging 7.0, 6.9 in total in all competitions. Four star weak foot, five star skill moves. That's why he felt good, to be honest. He's got good pace as well. Most of the wingers have good pace and good dribbling. So yeah, good little backup winger to have here. And that's only because he doesn't have a status. And we've got a very special winger in the Kiral Sadi midway through the season. On the first half of the season we picked this guy up, promoted him straight away. He was already a 60 overall. Ridiculous potential. So, yeah, he went up by six on his own. And he didn't even come at the beginning of the season, like Nunez. So I think he would have outgrown him. Yeah, 66 overall, potential to be special. Can't really ask more from a winger, can you? It's 5'9", another winger was 5'9". 25 appearances, 3 goals, 4 assists. 7.2 average, 7.4 in the FA Cup. Really good winger to have. Really good winger. And he didn't start most of the games, somehow. Because I keep playing on white over him. So, yeah. But I still do feel that he's going to take white spot. So, yeah. Don't worry, guys. Sometimes he does get the nod on. Erwin Callahan still can't see that status, unfortunately. 59 overall, gone up by 5. 5 foot 7 centimeter. He's the only natural centimeter we have at the club. Somehow. That's why I really went with that diamond formation. We didn't have loads of centimeters to put in there. Can also play as Cam, which really helps the transition. He can also play defensive wise, even though he's not that good. It doesn't feel like that. 
doesn't feel like he has red tackling stats and red marking stats. He feels like a average uh, holding fielder, to be honest. And he does have good pace. What he doesn't have is shooting, and I really noticed that in the season. That's why I didn't play him at Camelot. Because he can't finish. He just can't. He picked up two assists. Four clean sheets, yeah. So that's not that bad. It's not bad at all. Morgan Griffiths, five foot seven winger, really good player, exciting prospect. Came in the second half of the season, I believe. Sixteen games, three goals, good return to be honest. He had six point nine average. I feel like he deserves more than that. He did play a lot better than that. Two star weak foot, three star skill moves, I'm okay with that. It feels get better in the game actually. Especially the weak foot part of the thing. Uh, good pace and good dribbling about him. 85 ball control. Top of the lot. Good little player to have, to be honest. He's another super sub. Just like the next guy we're going to talk about right here. Spaz Alexandrov, free agent pickup from the first season, five foot nine winger from Bulgaria. Really good player, really like him. Unfortunately, he does not get the nod on because we do have amazing wingers. And Rose happened, so yeah, Alexandrov doesn't really start only when they're tired. Super sub, because he, I always trust him to do a job coming off the bench. Because I never forgot him. Goals, four goals and one assist, 34 appearances. Thought he had more than that, to be honest. But, I do feel satisfied with his performance. I think I did train him a bit in the dribbling part of things, especially in the first season. That's why he's got really good dribbling. Pace not so great, but it's still decent for this level. Still really good. Yeah, good little backup to have. Brandon Rose, what a player. Somehow he still doesn't have uh, a status. We'll have to take care of that in the summer. 62 overall. Doesn't feel like it. Feels like mid-70s already. That is why I keep on playing him. I do play him... Sometimes I did play him with Cam, especially at the end of the season, because he started creating a lot more chances than putting them away, you know. He was the guy that I'd pick up in the midfield and start doing skill moves with. Three star weak foot, five star skill moves, 78 pace, and good crossing in curve, as you can see. He did do some great deliveries that I miss, but he does have good passing. He does have way better passing than it shows there. So that's why I played him at camp. But you never know. Rose, he'll definitely be in the starting lineup. Where? It depends how he's playing. Sometimes he whips a good ball, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he releases really good balls. Sometimes he does it himself. Five goals, four assists, great little player. Averaging 7.3 only, somehow. I thought, he, I thought he would have more goals than assists. 8.7 in the Carabao Cup, that's really nice. 7.4 in the league, he did average more in the league than in all competitions, I'm happy with that. Magellan, exciting prospect, another winger. Five foot nine. 25 goals, we promoted him mid-season, 2 goals, 3 assists, 4 clean sheets, doesn't really matter the clean sheets to be honest, good pace and dribbling again, I think I did touch a bit of that dribbling, I may not have touched it if he was technically gifted, which I believe he was, but his dribbling is really good, his pace definitely feels higher than that. It's dribbling not so much, but yeah, that's debatable. I don't play him that much. I do play him a lot off the bench. Sometimes he gets the nod on, 
got that power headed trait that I really like but it's not really useful because he's a winger simple as that if it was even a central attacking midfield it would have been more useful but what can you do five star weak for that's really nice and three star skill moves Pierce White showing great potential only somehow he is a midget but he's a free kick specialist he is our free kick specialist five foot five only still got that thing in the domestic competitions he's never dis never disappeared I don't know why maybe a glitch two star three star not bad but really good stats especially the dribbling wise and the technical part of the thing good passing really good passing good volleys I never knew he had volleys free kick I'm training him on the free kicks and on the volleys as well the same drill and I think I'm training him on the curve as well I'm only doing the free kick drill with white but he already had good crossing good ball control good dribbling didn't touch those didn't touch the passing didn't touch the long shot part of things really good player really good technical player that's why I keep on playing him even though he misses some sitters sometimes that 62 finishing yeah it just shows sometimes well Marcos Andrade next a rather un, a sad story this one he was doing really well on the first half of the season as you can see 24 games five goals and seven assists nine clean sheets averaged 7.8 and 7.9 in the league and unfortunately on that game in the FA Cup he got injured and that was it for a season and unfortunately he is now he's still out he's still got a month of recovery left he did really well this season two star week for and two star skill moves is his major con but he does have some great agility which helps that's his best time. He's also got good dribbling. So, yeah. I did train him a lot in the first season. That's where he got that mad agility stat and the ball control one. He does have good finishing about him. Doesn't feel like he has 56 finishing. He has good attack positioning. No, he doesn't. But he doesn't feel like that. Surprisingly enough, he doesn't feel like that. Stamina, yeah. I remember stamina being an issue. And the strength, yeah. Right, next. Joel Martin, great little player we picked up. He was, seven, he was 62 straight away. We promoted him between the episodes at the end of the season. Popped up in the scout reports. 62 overall. He has potential to be special. He popped up like a 78 to 94. So we knew he was going to be quality. Can also play centre forward. Then play as you can see. 5 star Weefo and 1 star skill moves. It doesn't ruin the player because he can play central attack in the field and not have to do many of the skill moves. In fact I'm not really good at skill moves. I can do some especially with the ones I feel comfortable with like Rose, Griffiths, Magellan, Swine, Boyce, you name it but I know Martin's only got one star skill move so I'm not even going to try anything with him most of the times full control at 82 already really like that good pace but especially good agility and balance which is crucial to hold off the to hold on to the ball so yeah I was happy with that one even Boyce great striker only five foot nine but it doesn't feel like that it does feel like he's six foot which is nice to see 35 games eight goals 11 assists and 11 clean sheets great little player to have up front 7.9 average rating in the league 7.8 in total 60 overall only somehow 
great pace about him. His strength is a bit of an issue sometimes because he can't hold his own against the centre backs. But he does have good ball control, can drop deep, work for S Wine. Both of those guys are really good mobile units up front. Especially S Wine, which I believe he is taller. Let me just check. No, he isn't. He isn't. But he does feel taller than boys somehow. I don't know why. He do, does feel better on the ball, I guess. Will Davis just promoted him. Right winger. He's been on our youth academy for ages. For the whole season, really. Only played one game. Was the sim game, I believe. 7 average rating. 55 overall. He is 4 star weak foot. 4 star weak foot. 3 star skill moves. Good pace about him. Not great dribbling. But yeah, he's a good prospect for the future. Only 16. Caliber kill. He's definitely got the skills to pay the bills, as you can see there. 5 star skill moves. 3 star weak foot. Great pace about him. Nothing really else comes out. But with that pace and those skill moves, who cares about dribbling? And he's still got a bit of that. He's got a bit of ball control and a bit of crossing and curve. Which I don't really use because I play him at cam. Because he's got good long shots and good finishing. For most of his technical stats. So that's why I play him there. And because he doesn't really have a spot on the wing. Because of the loads of wingers that we have at the moment. Same happens to Vergara, but he doesn't even get the nod on most of the times. Came on like five times exactly, four in the league. All as substitutes. 6.3 average, 6.7 in the league. Didn't got a single goal assist or a clean sheet somehow. Three star weak foot, two star skill moves. Pace 71, I'm happy with that. That's really all he has. And he's got a bit of dribbling. That's it. He's not going to hang around for long. This one, Jamie Clark, 48 overall, just promoted. He was promoted in between episodes. Two star skill moves and two star weak foot. Good strength on him, good physical in there, good aggression. Technicals are just dead, but that'll, that'll grow in time, I believe. He's definitely over 75 because I've seen that arrow in the training. So yeah, there you go. Benedict and Pebba, we found him really at the end of the season to be honest. 59 overall, gone up by 3. Had a good time with him. He definitely feels a lot better than most of the players on the ball. 11 games, 5 goals. Goal every other game essentially. 7.7 .7 average rating. Just says there. That he's a good. He's gonna be a good player. Really good physicals. He does feel like a prop. He's built like a proper unit. He's six two. He's got strength. He's got pace. He's like a tank. The problem is his shooting. It really is. But that is the problem with most of our strikers. They can't finish. Tom Singh overall a 60 gonna buy two another free agent pickup. I think this is the last one. Six foot, great little player to have. Really like playing with him. He, had, he managed more than a goal per game, uh, more than uh, a goal every other game. My bad. Eleven goals, three assists, six clean sheets, twenty appearances, seven point seven average in the league, seven point eight in total. Especially because of the cup competitions. He did play a lot there. 71 pace, 65 dribbling. More than good enough. 3 star weak foot, 4 star skill moves. Did produce some belters this season. Which I really liked. Maximilian S1. This is the final free agent, isn't it? Yes it is. Final free agent on this team... Maximilian S1, the, be the best of the, the lot, really. 13 goals, 11 assists, 17 clean sheets. 7.9 average rating in the league, 7.8 in total. 
really liked him overall wise even though at the end of the season he started to drop off he had that massive 10 game goal drought but the the 10th goal of the season uh, in the league really boosted his confidence and he even scored another one before the end of the season 67 overall gone up by 4 78 pace 80 dribbling just great Dribbling and physical stats on most of the strikers and the finishing to down in the 50s and the 40s. So, yeah, that's the problem. I'm not going to touch those because I want the physicals to grow a bit more. You'll stunt the players if you overtrain them. When they reach their potential, that's when they will stop growing in physicals, unfortunately. So I can't train them. Kantiza Sabande, the king of volleys, really made a name for himself. Five-star weak foot, mostly because of that. And his great volleys at 62. I did train his volleys midway through the season. They did feel a lot better than their, their real stat. Long shots, really good. Good finishing about him. Everything technically wise, everything else just really not that great. But good pace about him, has some strength. Did have some attack positioning, which is crucial, especially for a, a guy who plays striker. I do play him striker most of the times because of me training him. And because he doesn't really have potential. He is below 75 overall, potential-wise. So that is why I trained him, because he's not going to be here for long. So if he's going to be here, might as well play in the first couple of seasons and then head off. 7.4 average in all competitions, 7.6 in the league, 1 goal, 3 assists and 3 clean sheets, all in the league, really good player, thought he'd have more goals than that, Oliver Lee, good backup winger I guess, he does play striker sometimes, when we didn't have Mpeba and Clark and we only and we had Singh going on international duty. Sometimes I'd put Oliver Lee there. Only played three games because boys happened, Singh happened, S1 happened. Especially in Peba. When in Peba came on, Lee never played. Because on the wing, he never really had a place. Because he doesn't have potential. And he's not really that special weak for him skill moves wise. And he doesn't have mental stats. He's got good, good physicals, not great compared to our wingers. Same with the technical stats. So yeah, he did manage to score a goal. It was in the FA Cup. He managed 7.5 average rating in the league. 8.7 in that game where he scored the goal in the FA Cup. He was the man of the match in that game. And in the league he managed 7.0. Good performances from him. Not great, not setting the world alight, but still decent, doing his job. Same with Taylor Mason, to be honest. Six foot, really rate highly wingers that are tall. That's why I played Taylor Mason a lot more than I did with Oliver Lee. Seven games, one assist. Doesn't have any technical stats whatsoever, apart from crossing. I do think he has some crossing. No, he doesn't. Actually, he doesn't have any good physical stat whatsoever. He only has pace. So that shows how tough it is to play with him. But he does have two really good things. The weak foot and the skill moves. So there you go. And he's grown really well naturally. Going up by six just this season. Really touch him. I think I trained a little bit of his crossing. Yeah, I did. Train a little bit of his crossing, I believe. But I'm not too sure. I might not have trained him. Yeah, that is the full squad report. I hope you have enjoyed this special episode. I've already taken notice of the uh, regions that are going to pop up in the next season. So, yeah. As you can see by the manager rating at 94. I did really do a good job. We completed most of our objectives. Actually, I believe we did all of the objectives. So that is nice to see. 
But that is going to do it for this episode, guys. I'm going to see you all next time. And until then, have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.